So my name is Tracy Kilgore. I am an Air Force veteran. Um, I um, joined the military at about 19 years old. And I did that because <clears throat> I felt like it was just the best way to go. My dad had been in the army and served in Vietnam. And um, he always had nothing but good things to say about his time traveling. And um, I found myself getting out of um, high school without, you know, a purpose. And I was working at BSA and um, housekeeping. And one night I cleaned the morgue and I said, man, this is not for me. This is There's got to be a better way. So went to the recruiter, talked to them, took the ASVAB, just didn't tell anybody. Um, wanted to keep it a secret. And so when I really made up my mind, um, went in under delayed enlistment and that was all she wrote. Um, I knew I wanted to go to the Air Force because I did my research. I knew that it had the shortest basic training and I wasn't down for all of that um, yelling and get down and give me 20 and, and, and give me these push-ups and sit-ups and all of that that, you know, you see on TV from the Army. So um, that was the reason why I went to the Air Force. I, I knew it was going to be shorter. I knew it wasn't going to be um, as tough as like going to the Marines or going... Um, um, I can't swim, so it wasn't going to be the Navy for sure, but, um, I didn't think I really had, you know, what it took to be a Marine and I just didn't really like the Army. So the Air Force it was, um, boot camp, basic training was six weeks long and, um, I thought I was in a different country. I, I really did. I thought that, um, I was like, where, where did they send me to I knew it was just the San Antonio but man you get off that bus and 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 they just start yelling at you and 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 breaking you down to build you up you know that's the the military way so um boot camp was was challenging um once you get the hang of it you know um but that that zero week was tough I cried myself to sleep that first night um I threw up all my food <laughs> the next morning. Um, it was like a culture shock to um, have to take a shower with 50 other um, females. Um, it was, it, it really was one of the the most challenging things, you know, I've done with my life, but I wouldn't have had it um, any other way. So my job in the Air Force was supply technician. We supplied all of um, um, the equipment that um the pilots need because believe it or not everybody in the air force cannot fly <laughs> i know that's what people think people think you go to the air force because you wanted to fly but um you support the mission everybody can be a pilot so um was a supply technician um i served the majority of my time at keesler air force base in biloxi mississippi um my highest rank was e3 when um I was in the squadron commander. She was a female as well. She um, she was concerned about my health. And um, I ended up being diagnosed with fibromyalgia um, while I was stationed at Keesler and got a medical discharge from the Air Force. And so um, that's probably one of my um, military regrets is that I didn't get to finish um, my first enlistment because I, I really felt um, like everybody else does that you're a part of this elite group of people um, who go to the military. Um, but God had a different plan. Um, I think I'm most honored by receiving the National um, Defense Service Medal because while I was serving, um, it was at the end of the Second Gulf War. And so um, everybody got that that medal um even though i didn't go and put my life on the line um i served during that time during that era so i got the national defense service medal um, when you're in the military it's one of the best things about it is that um you get to meet all of these people from just around the world you know different parts of the world and so i met people from i mean just all over the country and so <clears throat> even to this day i'm friends with um one of the first people i met when i got to keesler air force base um, he, um, became chief master sergeant, served 30 years in the military. He's now, um, chief of contracts at the Houston VA. And so, um, it really, um, instills in you this camaraderie with this group of people that, um, 
you have the most in common with. Um, so the best and worst military food that was served, I must say the Air Force. Now, I can't speak for all of the branches of the service, but Air Force had good food, fried chicken and mashed potatoes and 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 and, and macaroni and cheese and pies and cakes and all of that. I mean, whoever was cooking in those chow halls, man, they knew what they was doing. So um, we we got to eat all of that in basic training. And of course, um, there was like five, six chow halls on Kiesel Air Force Base. So you would just wherever you was, you know, um, at lunchtime, at dinner, if it was close to your dorm, you just eat at the chow hall. I mean, that's probably some of the best food, you know, um, being cooked on any military installation. Now, MREs, um, meals ready to eat, which, you know, are, are used for going out in the field. I think that was probably the worst food I ever had. Um, and it really um, doesn't sit well with your um, stomach as well. Um, so I have to drink a lot of water, but I think I only had to eat those twice um, in my military career. So really good food um, for my experience. So something funny that I experienced um, while in the military, I don't really know if it was funny, but um, <laughs> I almost drowned twice in basic training. I couldn't swim, but, you know, you just had to show them that you were willing to do it. I think that's, you know, the, 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 the most part you had to try it in order for them to pass you in basic training. So um, this like jungle gym thing over um, a pool of water, I fell right in. Um, and sunk to the bottom, you know, you can't feel the bottom, um, even though, you know, I'm only five foot two, all they, they kept saying, just stand up, just stand up. But when you're on your bottom, you know, you feel like you're drowning. So I did almost drown, but, um, thank God I made it and they passed me out of a uh, boot camp after that. So how has my military experience affected my life today? Um, I think I still um, hold true the three principles that I learned while in the military. Um, integrity, service above self, and excellence in all that we do. Um, I think I carry that with me. I, I, I hope I carry that with me as a social worker today. I hope I carry that with me um, working with veterans at the VA hospital today um, and just in my personal um, life. Um, I hope that I, I still carry those three principles that I learned. I hope that they're ingrained in me as who I am. It was what I was meant um, to do. I don't think I would um, be where I am today without the military. I don't think I would have um, went to college and got a master's degree without the military. Um, I don't think I would be working at the VA. Um, and, you know, I'm still that um, make your bed at 90 degree angles. The clothes hangers have to be all facing the same way. Um, you know, a little OCD, but I think, you know, <laughs> I think that's a good trait to have if you're going to get one from the military. So, um, it was probably one of the best things I could have ever done for my life. So, um, if I could say anything to any young person, um, if you're able to go, um, research the, the branches and figure out which one would be the best for you, but, um, if you don't have plans for college or if you need money for college, I mean, the military is it. Um, thanks.